Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm your host, John Towns, and I've got Ryan in the kitchen with me today. And we'll be cooking a recipe that's called to make pan puddings. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. Thanks for joining us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. So Ryan picked this recipe out. Why did you pick this one out, Ryan? Well, I wanted to get into this cookbook because I hadn't used it a whole lot. And I wanted to find something that wasn't a super heavy meat dish. I wanted to find some desserts or something fun like that. It's always kind of a challenge to find out what the next recipe is going to be. And uh, so this one is, this is pastry and cookery, um, Mrs. Susanna MacGyver. And this is one of the recipes with a, a lot of Scottish twist in it. It's not necessarily just Scottish, but uh, the, the measurements that she uses, um, some other things really say, okay, th this is kind of Scottish cookery, at least getting into the English world. Now, this recipe is tricky to yeah. read. I, I mean, it's like this one, you have to spend a lot of time and we can kind of fight over That's some of the That's kind of what drew me to it. I was like, right. wait, what? And, right. and it took four or five times. I'll to... let you read it. You want to oh, read this great. one? Yes, you read thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs> to make pan puddings, beat four or five eggs with four spoonfuls of flour. Cast it until the flour is free of knots. Put in a little salt and sugar to your taste. Beat cinnamon and nutmeg. Near a munchkin of sweet milk, a dram, a handful of currants, and as much sweet suet shred small. Wow. Mix all well together. Put a piece of butter in the frying pan or beef drippings. When it boils, lay as many petty pans in the frying pan as it will hold with their bottoms upmost. Put in the pudding stuff at the bottom of the petty pans. <laughs> you, must, you must fry them on a slow fire, otherwise you will burn them. It keeps going? Want, yeah. And they will be <laughs> raw in the heart. When the petty pans come easily off, they are ready for turning to the other side. They eat well and are very pretty dish. This is so, so complicated. And there, you got to interpret this all over the place because, I mean, this is not a modern recipe in any way, shape, or form. We don't have a lot of measurements here. Uh, we have some strange terms like a mutchkin and mm -hmm. sweet milk and, and a dram, dram mm -hmm. and suet, which we're probably you know not too too familiar with. And this whole thing with the petty pans and being upside down, right side up. What right. do we do with them? Right. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're gonna have to fight our way through this one. So. We start off with beat four or five eggs with, are we gonna do the full recipe here? We probably don't need a full recipe. You no, do a I guess recipe? we don't, yeah. Cause I mean, we'd end up with 47 of these things and we don't need that. So um, anyway, it starts off with beat four or five eggs with four spoonfuls of flour. So how much flour are you gonna use? What's a spoonful of flour? I was going actually, I, I, that's why I grabbed this, but I was gonna do heaping. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right, exactly. cause I think the goal is to have um, as much flour as you have egg. I think it's a 50-50. Okay. So that's where we're going to start anyways. Okay. So, um, yeah. So let's, and, and when it says cast, it means to continue to whisk. Why it doesn't say whisk, it says cast instead. I have no idea, but we're going to whisk that until the flour is free of knots. In other words, we want it whisked until it's not lumpy, right? And the last recipe I did from this book yeah. said cast some sugar to the mixture. Right. So they're using cast like right. it can it's mean like anything. Cast it in, <laughs> cast it in. So well, I guess let's get started. All
Now we need to add our munchkin of sweet milk. Now we, we trimmed this uh, recipe right. down a yeah. little bit, so I would say about half of that. Um, if you're doing a half recipe, a cup, our munchkin could be anywhere about a pint, maybe as much as 24 ounces. Um, but we don't want to add too much liquid here. We might have to add back in some flour mm -hmm. to bring our texture back up. We have our dram. It's just a tiny little bit of brandy you want to drop in there. Sure. And a handful of currants. Um, you want, maybe I should put the handful in because if you put a handful in, <laughs> we would have way too many. So here's our handful of currants. So the next part here is sweet suet shred small. So sweet being not yucky, rancid, right. or sour. <laughs> uh, you don't want that. Suet is hard to come by here in America, North America. So if you can't get a hold of suet, your closest substitute is going to be frozen butter chopped small. Because what we want it to do is hold together and then melt and make a little hole um, in this thing. It's sort of like a leavening. We've got the suet here that we sell in the store and we chop this down into a nice fine texture. It's ready to go into our mixture. So let's just put this in. So we tried to cut this recipe down. We still have like a half gallon of this stuff. Um, yeah, so the question is how this goes into those little pans. Will it right. run out? Will it cause us trouble? Uh, and we may have to thicken it up, but we're gonna try it like this. And if it, if it needs to have a little more flour, then that's what we'll add. I think for a standard pudding, if we were just gonna bake this, it'd be fine. Right. But we gotta flip those tins upside down. Right. Right. So, uh -huh. we'll let's, see. Let's heat up the fire. So here's the confusing part, or one more <laughs> confusing part here. It says, uh, uh, put the drippings in the frying pan. When it boils, I don't get this part. When it boils, lay in as many petty pans in the frying pan as it will hold with their bottoms upmost. Put in the pudding stuff at the bottom of the pudding pans, right? right. So what's your interpretation okay. here? So I read this a few times and I was like, wait, how do you do this? Do they have like putting the petty pans that don't have a bottom. But really, I think what she's saying is, go ahead and put them in to see how many your pan is gonna hold. Once you've got an idea of what's going on, fill them up and then put them back in. But you are putting them bottom down. And once that cooks enough that it holds, you're gonna flip them around and cook the other side. Now the challenges that we have here are that because these have these little ridges, they're not gonna sit just so. They're not gonna be perfectly flat. So that coupled with a possibly loose batter, we are going to have to do some experimenting here, but I think we're going to get it. Okay. They're out of the pan. They're cooked. You did a great job on these. Thank you. I, I didn't know how they were going to turn out. I didn't either. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, they were tricky getting them to flip over mm -hmm. in the pan. And, but yeah, it and getting them out of the little tins was a little tricky. Yeah. But here they are. We ended up buttering the tins a lot to get them to release. I mean, you could serve them up in the little tin, but it's not as nice. No. And, and she talks about how this makes a very pretty dish. This is what she's talking about. 
Uh, we went ahead and sprinkled some sugar over some of these. You could do a pudding sauce, and we've done a whole episodes on pudding sauces. Uh, pudding sauce is really good. You could just slather these in maple syrup or any other numbers of dangerous things. Um, let's try it out. Oh, look at it. Mm, looks good. Yeah. I'm going to tear this open here. It has that typical uh, pudding consistency. The... Um, I don't know. The suet didn't do exactly what I expected it to do. It's supposed to leave little holes in it. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like it, I don't know, maybe it clumped up. I don't know. We yeah. shred it fine enough. This one looks better. Yeah, there you go. That looks good. They're tasty. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't want to boil a pudding, because these are very, very related to that idea of boiled puddings. If you don't want to boil a pudding, you don't want to take four hours to make this soft ball sized thing. You want to do them small in a pan, in a frying pan. These, these do the, they yeah. just do what you need Let's them do to it. do. Very good. I could eat them all day. Mm -hmm. There's maybe, I mean, you could lift these up with a little more spice, maybe a little more yeah, nutmeg. Right. Absolutely. Yes. That's the only spice that I think could be added to make them better. They're pretty good. So maybe you're interested in the full boiled pudding experience, but you don't want to actually boil a pudding in your house for four hours. You can watch the video where we make a full boiled pudding just like in the Charles Dickens Christmas Carol and like they did in the 18th century. And you can see that episode here.